だってヘラ<笑>ヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘラヘ A bit of pre dive banter between the team here that included Jace and also Nick, which were two local Sparrows and game fishermen in the area. So they kind of spread out of it, it's either a Either not much or not much is holding it up. This is me. And it wasn't long, and we spotted some bird action diving into the water. It was hard not to get excited, as in the waters here at this time of year, you never know what you might see on these boil ups. It was action straight away with a nice meatball and plenty of skipjack tuna hitting it. You see all the white dots in the water, that's all the scales off the bait fish that have been nailed by these tuna. That spooky sight when all the tuna just disappear. And you think maybe there's going to be a big predator come up. I'm hoping that it's going to be a nice big tuna or a marlin, but it also could be a big shark. And sure enough, one of those big sharks come up from the depths to hit the meatball. We'd seen this action the year before, and it's a really, really good sign we're on a good spot when these big sharks turn up. There seems to be a mixture of both bronze whalers and what I'm guessing are dusky whalers coming in on these meatballs. You can sort of tell the difference. The dusky whalers seem to be a lot more broad with more of a rounded nose and much, much bigger. There's albacore there as well now, Johnny. It's hard to it's hard to dis differentiate that. It got exciting when some albacore turned up, and I'm caught in two minds: either having my big long gun with two rubbers in case of a big fish. But you want the maneuverability to try and hit these small tuna. They're very difficult to predict, and I try and intercept one and miss the shot. Over time, the meatball would progressively get smaller and smaller as more and more of the bait has been eaten. Every so often, the meatball, when it's not harassed by the tuna enough, would take off along the surface, and if we weren't able to catch it, we'd have to stop, unload our guns, and jump back in the boat. With all this excitement, I make sure to put my rubber cork on the end of my spear, as you don't want someone getting injured in the haste of jumping in and out of the boat. Fortunately, with the amazing conditions above water, we could spot the meatballs on the surface, even when there was no bird action.
Diving head first again. Just the awesome sight of all these tuna going mental. As I mentioned, you're torn which spear gun you should use in this situation. Nix decides that he's gonna use a 50 centimeter gun and see if he can shoot one of these skipjack. Pretty good going getting any fish with a 50 centimeter gun, let alone a tuna moving that quickly. I always try to keep my eyes peeled because every so often through all these skipjack you can spot an albacore like that one there. They move slightly different and a little bit more erratic. They've got their peck fins out and you try and intercept the shot like that. I dropped caliber down to my 120 carbon weedy gun just to give me a little bit more maneuverability. And sure enough it works perfectly as I get a perfect shot on this fish. Although not particularly big, it's really exciting getting nice tuna like this. They make great eating. I would sit there and watch and watch and watch until I'd spot an albacore and then lock my eyesight and try and stay on it. It can be so confusing as most of these tuna are all skipjack. And there's one shooting through the skipjack. I don't want to take my eyes off it because as soon as I do, I'll lose it. A quick snapshot and I get a decent shot on it, but my GoPro runs out. <laughs> the action began heating up with more and more of these big sharks turning up. Does that constitute big, Jace? Even though these sharks look quite daunting and quite intimidating, they were very, very placid and never aggressive towards us. If anything, they were annoyed that we were intercepting their meatball. Okay, so up to the workout, bro. Right on the workout. Yeah, but they're fine. They're chill. Yeah, get a spear gun. Well, then Brad goes and shoots a skippy in the bum. Get You're a big shark, John. There are two extremely large whalers of some form. What are you doing at the boat? Get back in there. Oh, just having a stretch. <laughs> Call me brave, man. I'm like brave. <laughs> I'm a very, very large shark. Fortunately, when it was my turn to boat, John decided to jump on the boat and have a rest, and there was no way I was going to sit in the boat if I could avoid it. Back in the water, there were more albacore around. It was looking so exciting. I managed to stick another good intercepting shot on this one, but with their soft flesh, they can tear very, very easily. Just a quick disclaimer, as we're about to just completely lose all composure and lose our minds through excitement. I asked Jason to second shoot my albacore, not knowing what was about to turn up. Bang, right in the corner of the screen, our dream fish makes a pass. Bro, don't put in any pressure, no pressure. Yeah, 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 oh, it's bad, bad. Do 
Amongst all the chaos, we didn't realize that Brad had shot one also. Not knowing of the situation and how well both fish were shot, we're desperate to try and get a second shot into the fish to make sure that we secure them. With limited opportunities like this, we don't want to make a mistake. Once Brad's fish is under control, we head back to Jason to give him a hand. Just work it up, man. If you get as high as you... Yeah. I'll dive as deep as I can to try and shoot it. I'll dive as deep as I can to shoot it. Lie flat on the surface, bro, so you don't get tangled. Just stay away from this rope, sir. I'm trying to wind in all the slack reel line because we don't want to get caught up in that. Although sometimes these fish look like they're dead, You've got to be so cautious grabbing them as they have so much horsepower that can turn the situation dangerous. Look at that beautiful fish, Brad. Oh, bro. Oh, that point black. Yeah, tell us about it, mate. What happened? I was trying to shoot albacore on the meatball. Back to the surface, so I just got the head butter by five of these. Look at that. Yeah, that. yeah mate, Stuff that's a beautiful it, fish, mate. Oh, let's get it in the boat. Back to Jace's fish, and we've got 50 meters of real line peeled out as well as some float line. So Jason's just slowly working the fish up making sure not to put too much pressure as we're not sure how well the shot is. Bro, watch the, all your real line. Try and get out of it before you grab it, okay? Race it! It was hard to say who was more excited, me or the guys who actually shot these fish. Your shot was actually pretty good, Thanks mate. so much. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually not bad. It's real good. I was really worried about the shot, it's but it's holding sweet. Oh, wow. What a fish, mate. <laughs> yeah. Lift it up, boy. Woohoo! Woohoo! Another yellow fin. <laughs> Show us, Jace. Show us what you got. Bring it to the back of the boat. Just holding under the skin, it seems. Just held right through there, bro. After about a hundred high fives, an absolute stoke on the boat, 
with Jace and Brad landing these fantastic fish, they encouraged us to jump back in the water and keep trying. We weren't sure if anything was going to happen again, as that was only a short window of the entire day that it absolutely went off with Yellowfin. After being back in the water for not that much time, I hear Nick yell out, the Yellowfin are back. The meatball splits in two and I make my way over to my small part. Fortunately, I'm by myself, so there's not too much deterring the fish from coming up from the depths. In the haste of me turning my camera on, all of a sudden one of them's right underneath me and I plant an absolutely perfect shot, as it turns out. The fish is badly hurt as it turns out I broke its spine with that shot and it doesn't really fight. I don't even need to let go of my gun. But with a dream fish like this, there's no way I'm going to risk losing it. Sometimes you can grab a big fish and the flopper closes and the spear might come out. There was no way I was going to risk that. It pays with all medium to large game fish to get a good kill shot or a second shot into it before grabbing it. Shoot on the top of the head, Johnny. But it's sort of the top of the head. Sitting here doing the voiceover, I still can't believe what I experienced. This is an absolute dream fish for me to spear in New Zealand, and it's not something that you get a lot of opportunity to do. Not only were we lucky enough just to get one, but we managed to get three in the same day. Very rarely do I get this excited spear fishing, but it's certainly something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Awesome, bro. Hold her up for us, mate. I'm not as strong as you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you beauty. We managed to have these three fish boated by late morning and there were still two guys on the boat that hadn't had the opportunity at them. So we did our best as we saw a couple more yellow fins swimming on the surface. We started dropping over the anchovies from the meatballs, hoping that they might come through. It was a constant stream of skippies coming through and then the odd big shark would turn up also. After about another hour in the water, the ice started to melt, so we made the call to head back in and make sure that we could keep the fish in good condition. I've got to say a huge thank you to Brad for taking us out on the day. 
and also to Jace and Brad for their expertise for finding these game fish. Obviously, a lot of it comes down to luck, but these guys knew what we were looking for bait-wise and were able to read the situations very, very well. Let's hope this is a more common sight here in New Zealand. How many fish have you shot before this one? Um, the 20. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What, how did it go? In the right hand. Good car. <laughs> no, I just came in. I was meant to be uh, shooting a little Albie. You meant to second shoot my Albie, weren't you? Yeah. Fortunately, you didn't, eh? <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. work, bro. What a fish. 